Yeah, exactly. Welcome, 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 everybody. This is this is Teresa Gamble, your host for today. We are live streaming with you live with the one, the only Joy A. Stokes. She is the queen of live stream. Oh, that rhymed real good. I'm gonna have to use that one. She is the queen of live stream. So today I am so excited to finally have her in the room. Um, last time it was, um, we were um, face to face, posting me face to face in November, but I had a family emergency. I said, Joyce, I got to get you back. I got to bring you back in the room. And we checked our dates and we finally got her back. But I just want to let everyone know what Startup Grind is. You know, Startup Grind is the world's largest community of startups, founders, innovators, and creators. We bring like-minded yet diverse individuals together to connect, to learn, teach, help, build, and belong. We do this daily through our local events, our flagship events, our startup program, our partnerships, online media and content. Collectively, we reach over 3.5 million individuals worldwide. And our values, what we believe, we believe in making friends, not contacts. We believe in giving and not taking. We believe in helping others before helping ourselves. That's our values at Startup Grind. And as the chapter director of Startup Grind Jacksonville, we believe the same values and principles. But I wanna take this time to let you know that I'm so proud of my community, that we are standing up for against racism. The mantra from our founder, Derek Anderson said that if you're silent, you are complicit. We do not support people who are silent. Black lives do matter. So Startup Grind has already launched a campaign and initiatives. Believe it or not, we was working on this back in February at the global conference, really fine tuning it and rolling it out to make sure we have a diverse community because we are diverse in Startup Grind. So I just wanted to let you know, we are in the fight. We are coming to be a part of the solution and not the problem. And just to say that even more, cause I don't want to talk too much more cause I am so ready to hear and see what Joystick is going to teach us tonight. Miss Joy Stokes, this is the queen, and y'all better have your pad. You better have your pen ready. Wait a minute. Let me see. Do I got mine ready? Let me look. I'm telling y'all, let me get mine ready, because I already know she's going to bring it. She is going to bring it, so you better keep up. Hold on, because she's going to throw some resources out at you, and I also want to congratulate her. She is also expecting, I've been following her maternity journey on social media. She's been tagging me on the polls. It is so beautiful. Her and her husband got a marriage podcast. They talking about the marriage, the parent, the parental, parental journey of the pregnancy. And she a businesswoman. Now see, y'all, none of y'all don't have no excuse if Miss Joy Stokes is doing all of that. So I introduce to some and presents to everybody virtually, Ms. Joy A. Stokes, the founder and CEO of Joy Sticks. Thank you, Joy, for being in the room with us tonight. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I don't, I don't even know how to come <laughs> I don't know how to speak at all. <laughs> Yes, I, we've oh, been, thank me, you so me, much. Yes, me and you both have been waiting for this opportunity. I'm so yes, excited. So just a little bit, just tell us briefly, you know, who is Joy A. Stokes? I read your amazing bio. You do a lot. I thought I do a lot. You do a lot too oh, in Atlanta. That's both. I think that that's both of us. Um, but the beautiful thing is, is that we figured out how to collaborate. Yes. instead of try to compete with each other because it's definitely things that you bring to the table that I need help with you know I think we initially got together in Savannah um, through Miss Bernice Lohman at her event and yes. um, I told you I said look I'm I don't understand this whole business plan thing, but I know that you know how to do one and you're going to get me together. So um, so initially that was how we we definitely connected and, and through who we connected was um, through Miss Bernice. And, you know, it's amazing because a lot of times when you connect with people, you do 
feel like you have to compete with them. And what I have learned, and, and obviously what you have learned is, is that collaboration beats competition any and every day. There are things that I do that you can't do. There are things that you do that I can't do. And I definitely want to say thank you for continuing to stay on me. Thank you for continuing to say, hey, look, I done called you. I didn't text you. I didn't emailed you. <laughs> we gonna figure this out. And as you, you were like, I know it's mommy brain. Yeah. And it probably, definitely, probably was, but I, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to talk and teach um, through start, Startup Grind uh, Jacksonville. You know, um, with this pandemic and everything going on, one of the things that we definitely have to do is try to figure out how to create more content. Yes. And in the midst of creating more content, how can we monetize it? Because essentially we're, um, you know, for the first month and a half, you know, we were quarantined. So we couldn't leave the house the way that, you know, we normally could have, you know, I've talked to people who say that, you know, they're not actually physically showing back up to work until September, oh, wow. you know, um, and that they're working from home. And so, you know, um, so in the midst of all of that, we've got to figure out how to share our gift and how to make sure that we still are able to take care of our, you know, our financial needs. And so um, I think that two years ago when I created Joystick, you know, I wasn't thinking about none of, none of y'all, you know? I, <laughs> I mean, if I'm just being completely honest, I was on the radio with Michael and Joy and the morning Periscope came out and I said, oh, this is a great way for me who I love to talk I said, this is a great way for us to be able to get information out because, you know, when you start off as anything, no one knows who you are. You know, um, they're still trying to figure out why we should tune into your show versus someone else's show, yeah. why we should listen to you versus someone else. And so um, when I saw the fact that we could just use that platform to be able to get information out, I said, oh, well, this is great. And, um, and then I realized that I didn't want to hold the phone for two hours. Wow. <laughs> and so that was, I took my photography, you know, background and I took, um, you know, just, you know, cr my creative brain and I put some stuff together and joystick was invented, you know, never once did I think, oh, let me figure out a way to sell it. But we had a lady come on the radio and ask where she could buy it. And I said, oh, what, hold up, what? <laughs> Wow. And then later on that day, I went home and I, you know, um, I think once we got off the radio, I, I went and I bought the domain name immediately and I went home and I started trying to figure it out, you know, and, um, and I'm so glad that I did because fast forward two years, you know, here we are with trying to figure out how we can Zoom meet and how our, we can do school from home and how we can, you know, um, FaceTime and Instagram Live and YouTube Live and Facebook Live and StreamYard and all these different platforms, you know, simultaneously, more importantly, you know, not have to do it over and over and over again, you know? Um, and so I'm thankful that, you know, God chose me <laughs> that's I'm glad he did too because when I met you in Savannah I saw that stand I said oh I said honey I want me one of them right there that was the first thing that came out not knowing what it was yeah but I saw all the devices and I know you're gonna show show it um the our viewer audience what it looked like but it's yes. just amazing and then the additional products you not added on since the pandemic. Oh, yeah. I, I ain't gonna tell it all. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, all right. no, I ain't gonna tell it all. It's definitely fine. But yeah, you know, I mean, because I feel as if, you know, when you're building a brand, just like how we you had mentioned the guy who had all these spinoff brands, mm -hmm. but he is the brand, you right. know. Um, joystick is the brand. And so I'm thinking, well. If I'm in everything cell phone at this point, you know, it makes sense. Like, what if someone wants to support me, but might not necessarily need a whole joystick, but right. they want to find, but, but they have issues with their lighting. Okay. 
Well, they could buy a joystick LED light, you know? And so there, I wanted it to be a one-stop shop. And so as I started to think about what my look, needs might look, be. <laughs> look, you know, uh, look, y'all, I got to show y'all mine, honey. <laughs> look, I got to show y'all mine. <laughs> she, this is from, from Joystick. I, I think she put a post up and I shared it. <laughs> Thanks. About a week or so ago, this come in the mail. <laughs> well, you know, I got to make sure that people who make sure I'm right, I got to make sure that you guys are right, you know? Um, and it. so, you know, it's never, I don't think when I, again, when I created any of my businesses, it was never about, oh, let me just try to get like, you know, hog nasty, millionaire, billionaire rich. It was, you know, how can I, you know, meet the needs of everyone else, you know? And even as I continue to add, you know, products to the product line, I'm trying to figure out, okay, well, if you want to live stream or record some content and you happen to drive down the street and you see this beautiful park, you know there's no electricity, you know, but your phone is about to die. Okay, well, what could I add to the product line? And that's really been my thought process the whole entire time during this pandemic is what could I continue to add to just make life easier so that when you go to the Joystick website, you can get everything you need right there and you don't have to head to Amazon, you know, or eBay or, you know, on one of these other websites. And, you know, it's been a blessing because as I have set up a, a, um, a vending table in my garage, you know, to live stream and to make sure that through this pandemic that I'm still being seen, you know, um, every time I talk about a new product, like literally, all the people who have just recently bought something, they're like, really, Joy? <laughs> really? You know I would have bought that too. And so now they're like, okay, well, add that, you know, and the next thing I know, I look and I've got more orders, you know, and not a joystick, but other accessories, you know, um, that they know that at the end of the day is an investment back into themselves and an investment back into their business because truth be told, you know, they're going to need it, you know? Let's 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 talk about it's two things you said um a few minutes ago that you wanted to help people. You wasn't looking to uh get rich quick. You wanted to yeah. help people. So you sought out the problem and you made it relevant. You know, you all things cell phone. You know, you can do everything through cell phone, iPad, laptop. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you talked about the investment, and that's one of the things that I have been trying to drive home lately that we got to move out of the entertainment phase and want to be entertained because that's only for a season. That's, right. Why is it important for small business owners to even invest in joystick right now? Um, <clears throat> I think that one of the, one of the main reasons, and um, I see that one of my business partners has popped on uh, Sabrina Lowry um, is because when she came to me, she was spending about $300 a month on, uh, for marketing. Wow. And she was going to someone else's venue. He had his green screen set up. He was doing her video work for her. Um, and when she started to think about that investment, she was like, well, if I just invest $99 in a joystick, now I can do all of this stuff on my own. You know, and so that was, you know, pre-COVID-19, you know what I'm saying? So right. if you think now, you, I mean, especially when we were quarantined, we were stuck in the house, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, we're supposed to be stuck in the house, you know, there you go. I mean, so you're not, you're, you're not able to meet with a videographer to have him create content, you know? And so truth be told, one of the main reasons is we gotta, we have to stop being dependent on other people. Mm. You know, and, and that um, statement is across the board, you know, we have to figure out now I'm spiritual. So of course, you know, my dependence is on my, my God, but when I, I'm talking about physical people, you know, like when I want to create content, I, I can't sit around and wait to make sure that, you know, someone else is there to do it for me. You know what I'm saying? And so a joy, everybody's got a cell phone. Everybody has, you know, has um, uh, a tab. Most people have tablets. 
You know what I mean? My nine year old, my 10 year old son has a cell phone. So if he wanted to sit there and create his YouTube channel playing video games, which a lot of kids watch and a lot of kids are doing now, you know, um, he doesn't need me anymore. He puts his phone up. He sits it there so that he can record, you know, for however long he needs to record for. And 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 I'm out the picture, you know. And so we have to be able to figure out how to put the the ball back in our own court and mainly, you know, control our own content so that someone else isn't controlling it for us. That's good you mentioned uh, controlling content. With live streaming with joystick, how can a business owner or individual um, protect their virtual content when they're live streaming and monetizing. And I know we do all the branding on the video and stuff. Um, I know StreamYard, they does it. Zoom do, will do it when we get through with this. But how does that person protect that virtual content when you have no control where it goes? Um, well, so we do have somewhat we do have control. We just don't use it as much as we want to. We don't have to leave our videos on Facebook after we go live. We don't mm -hmm. have to leave our videos on Instagram or, or StreamYard once we go live. We can take it down and then we could edit it. We could chop it up. We could put our logo on it and we could put it on our YouTube page, which right now is the only platform that will allow you to monetize. So we do have control. I feel as if the second part of creating content and live streaming is we get lazy. Mm. And so it's a lot easier for me to live stream on Facebook and leave it up there so that, you know, my thousand friends can share it and share it and share it and share it as opposed to me taking it down and then editing it and then putting it on my YouTube page, which I have started to do that. Even though I go live on Facebook, I'll still take the video and I'll still chop it up because a 45 minute video, let's just be honest, no one is, most people aren't gonna go back and watch that in its entirety. They're gonna fast forward to the parts that they wanna see. So if I'm talking about, you know, a new product that I'm dropping, if I'm talking about how to put your joystick together, then that's two separate videos. So I can actually save that video, create one for how to put your joystick together, create the other one for the product line, and then create a third video. Um, no, lately, I've been making three videos from one. And then the new product that I'm launching, and then I put all of that on my YouTube page. And then I share that from YouTube to my social media platforms. Which will um, drive traffic back to your YouTube channel. Which, which, ev which will drive traffic back. And then the beautiful thing is, is that YouTube isn't contingent upon anything. You know, like Brenton could stumble upon my joystick video, you know, if he just put in the right keywords, you know. Whereas with Facebook, you know, it's typically contingent upon who you're following, who your friends are. And the same with Instagram, you know, it's, who you're following, unless someone shares your video, you know, half of the world might not even see it. And we mm. can tell that because we can tell off of that the amount of shares that we have, or we can tell off of the, the statistics, the analytics, you know, where it's been, how many people have shared it to other people. We can tell by our views, you know. Um, YouTube, the beautiful thing is, is that it can't, it'll never get a view if you don't ever put it up there. Mm. So you have to stop being lazy, you know, <laughs> and expecting, you know, these other platforms to do your marketing and your promotion for yourself. You know, you you're, you're going to have, there's a level of involvement that, <laughs> that you're going to have to do on your own when it comes to building your brand. You know what I mean? Wow. That, I mean, that. That is so powerful because I've been doing a lot of researching on the different, because there's so many live streaming platforms mm -hmm. to choose from. But I've been strategic, just like you say. I want to find a platform from live streaming that I can monetize. Mm -hmm. So that's good to know that YouTube is the only one that you can monetize right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. So and when I say monetize, let me just, let me break that down one step further. Okay. It's the only one where they will cut you a check. Mm. Now with Facebook, you can share it. The beautiful thing is, is that, you know, like 
all a thousand of your friends could share your video if they wanted to. It's not like it hurts them, you know, just like it's not like subscribing to your YouTube channel is going to draw blood from the person subscribing. You know what I mean? Like, right. I, it is the funniest thing because I, I sit there and I'm look, I look and I'm like, OK, I got 1500 friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I just need y'all to just subscribe to the channel. Like, why is it taking so long to get 100 people? <laughs> because yeah. once you get 100 people, now you can brand your YouTube channel. So wow. now it could be youtube.com backslash joystick as opposed to youtube.com backslash ABC4548, you know, 93. You know, this long link, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but when people talk about supporting you and supporting your business, it's amazing to me because there are so many things that someone can do to support your business that cost them nothing at all. One of those things, Joy, I'm curious. Let me see if I can compare my <laughs> short list with your short list. I don't believe that you're curious. I believe that you know. Um, <laughs> reposting uh, a video that you posted, reposting your content, um, sharing your content, um, subscribing to your YouTube channel, you know, um, all of those things are, cost them nothing, you know, um, liking a post on your, on Instagram or YouTube or whatever it is, retweeting you, those things are free, you know, it's just a matter of whether or not we really want to do it or not. That's, I mean, that, to be completely honest, it boils down to, you know, do I feel like sharing this? You know, um, do I feel like liking it? And, you know, and so that's a, that's an internal thing, but needless to say, one of the reasons, um, one of the things that makes social media so, so cool is the social aspect of it. So if you're only posting your stuff then you're not really taking full advantage of social media because it's not just about you. It's about you being social with other people. You're not gonna, you know, walk into a, a club and stand there by yourself. You go to the club to be social. And so a part of being social is, hi, my name is Joy Stokes. You know, hi, my name is, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. and then allowing other people to speak to you. That's the social con the the social concept. So if you take that out, you know you might as well just stay at home. Like <laughs> that's true. Well, I love your story, your message, your why, and you know, really giving us some perspectives on you know how monetizing our live stream is important and which platforms we need to be focusing on mm -hmm. and patronize back. Because I'm the same way. If I have colleagues and business partners that are doing things, even stuff that you have done. I've shared it on all my social media platforms. I just pick a day <laughs> and I just go see, okay, what are my uh, my entrepreneurial friends that support and share my stuff? What are they doing today mm -hmm. that I can help share or drive traffic? Or if I can't attend the event, let me share mm -hmm. and get some people to come register and support the event. That's how I do the same thing, thing for its reciprocation. Mm -hmm. So from that point, Take us to this amazing product that you have invented. And I can't, I've been seeing some of the accessories on the pictures. I'm like, I'm not going to, I said, I'm getting upset. I got to hurry up and get my stuff. <laughs> I'm like, well, um, I'm going to, uh, let's see. I'm actually using one right now. I don't know if you can see it maybe with this virtual background. Um, it is not allowing you to see. I wonder if I could take it off. Um, but you know, that's the, so the other beautiful thing is, is, is all about branding. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, didn't you say that there was a way that I could, um, leave your background, put, put, see if you can put the device in front of you. Oh, okay. See if that'll work. Yes. So this is part of it. So I'm mm -hmm. actually on Facebook and I am on YouTube um, and I'm and I am on Instagram at the same exact time. Um, so I have two phones. I'm actually charging my devices as well with the new charging bank that we have. Um, you have a link to your um, 
to your affiliate page, which was another thing that I wanted to do from the beginning, you know, was you scratch my back, I scratch yours. I, I've never, again, it was never all about just, you know, me making money. If, right. if you are out here promoting me and talking about me and helping me get sales, I've always felt like at the same time, you should be getting your, your justice and your due back as well too. And so um, I know that you have a link. I know that we have posted a coupon code so that you can use that as well too. I did have um, a whole presentation as yeah, you well too go, go ahead. that yeah. I can make sure that I um, you know, send to you so that you could possibly share out to the people that have come. But you know, when it comes to the, the main thing is I wrote a book called Monetize Your Live Stream because again, we have we've got to figure out as we are creating content what we can do to get outside of get outside of you know the four walls that we are in. You know, um, again, one of the events that we met at with Miss Bernice was she was trying to figure out she has so many great speakers and so much great content, but she was in Savannah, you know, yeah. and so she was like, okay, how can I be outside of Savannah? And, you know, she had some people come from Africa. And one of the things that we did was we live streamed her event and we sold live stream tickets. So now she's not just in Savannah, she was in Savannah and wherever else someone bought a ticket at, you know? That's amazing. I did um, a event with my business partner, Sabrina Lowry called Let's Talk Live Stream. And we did it three years ago. So we were, you know, uh, a little ahead of the curve, you know, um, but when we did it, we sold more live stream tickets than we did physical tickets, which was the point, you know what I mean? Like was, when you, when you subscribe to cable, you know, you can watch whatever you want to watch on DVR whenever you feel the need to watch it, right? right? That's what live streaming is, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you could watch it right then, but you can also pay, like pay-per-view from back in the day to yeah. watch it when you, when you want to, you know? And me and Sabrina, we have... Um, repurposed all of our all of our live talks our live stream um 2.0 that we just did you know you can go over to her geek tank academy and you can pay to watch the replay you know oh, wow. and so when you think about all of the content that you have you can download the audio and now you have a podcast Mm -hmm. you know um again you have one video that's chopped up into three separate videos or, you know, you could take one video and chop it up into numerous one minute clips like what we talked about earlier, just to kind of get people engaged in who you are and the content and, and the, the information that you're giving out. So you really, like I said, you know, you're going to have to take a little time to figure out what else you can do after the content is created. Because the last thing you want to do is, is spend an hour having an amazing interview and then be like, all right, that was great. <laughs> and, we <laughs> never, and we never hear from you guys ever again. We don't ever hear, we don't ever see you collaborate ever again. We never hear about it ever again. You know, um, that's one of the reasons why I, could, I asked you if I could live stream it. Because I was like, okay, well, once we're done, you already know that I'm going to chop it up <laughs> Yes, and I'm going to make about two or three different videos and I'm going to post them all to my YouTube channel. Now, uh, no one might not ever look at it, right? Maybe not, but look, I got five emails. So it's going to get at least five likes and five views, right? <laughs> because I'm going to go like it myself. Of course. But the other part is, is that if you don't ever create it, no one could ever like it. So That's you've got funny. to, you've got to, my favorite movie is, um, is Field of Dreams where, you know, um, he says, if you build it, they will come. Uh -huh. You've got to, you've got to create it. You've got to write it. You've got to build it. You've got to say it. You know what I mean? Like you've got to, there's a part of it that involves you, nobody else, but you, you know? So let me ask you a question. How can Joy, I know um, at the um, Christian Business Owner Summit, we was at in Savannah. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I saw a few pastors, they were very interested in the joystick, but like you said, you was really ahead of the game. A lot of them didn't have a buy-in at the time for the need of it. Mm -hmm. With this, with not just joystick, but even the strategies you give in um, ministry, how to be able to repurpose content. Some of them may have throwback sermons because I know TBN, oh, yeah. they play sermons Bishop Jake's preached back in the late 90s. I'm like, mm -hmm. and it's so relevant to the mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that, um, how can joystick help those pastors? Because again, some of us are still staying home and staying in place. Everybody right. is not open and yeah. doing business as usual. Yeah, um, so I have actually seen an influx um, last month in, in business from churches who were dead set on never live streaming ever, ever, because mm -hmm. their pastors were just older. They didn't get it. They didn't understand the technology. They didn't under, they didn't think that they were going to be capable of doing it. And then they had a couple younger, you know, people say, pastor, we got to get the word out still. You know what I mean? Like, so we've got to figure it out. And so, you know, what they did was they invested in a joystick. And even though they might not be able to have the congregation come to church, they can still through Facebook or through their own, um, through their YouTube channel or through their own website, they could still at least record the content. They might not have, they might not live stream it, but again, most people have a cell phone. So now you don't have to worry about these five, six hundred thousand dollar video cameras. You know what I'm saying? Right. That you create the content. Literally, how me and you are sitting right here. You know, your pastor can sit there and record, record a sermon, and then post it on YouTube or Facebook, like a, like a watch party. So literally, they can record it as if it's happening that Sunday at ten o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, right. And so. I mean, and then the other part is export the audio. So now you have your podcast, you know, um, our, me and my husband's podcast is on Anchor, you know, um, as well as YouTube, you know, as well as, you know, other platforms, because not everybody is going to be on Facebook. Not right. everybody's going to go to YouTube. Not everybody's going to go to Instagram or Facebook. So you really want to try your best to be wherever you can be so that you can get whoever you can get. And then as you continue to build and build and build, people be like, okay, well, I know that I can watch this on Instagram TV, or I know that I can watch this on Facebook. And they're going to continue to look for you because at the end of the day, they want the content and the information that you're sharing, you know? So um, I, I, I know for sure that when it comes to pastors you know it's it's it is thinking outside the box it is coming to the revelation of this is where we're at now you know right. um yes we can still social distance you know but at the same time you know you want your congregation to know that you're thinking about their safety as well too you know um i know we're all covered by the blood you know, and everybody is going to be okay. But at the same time, you know, God, God didn't say just be out here being stupid. You know, right. <laughs> he said, look, you know, I gave you, I gave you a spirit of discernment. So I need you to discern your way on whether or not this makes sense or not. And so, you know, um, there are, you know, a lot, there's a lot of content. I'm pretty sure if you sit there and you think about speeches and talks that you've done that you might have recorded you could probably go back you probably have four or five seasons on a podcast for sure <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that if you think about the video you probably have a ton of videos that you can post on YouTube you know wow. I mean um and again you just never necessarily know I could still go back and post Michael and Joy radio shows you know, from when we were on the radio together from two, three years ago, um, from, from months probably because we record, I recorded all of that stuff. But, you know, it's not, even though we're not together anymore, some of those guests that came on the radio show are still out here. They're still working. 
you know, their brands are still growing, you know what I mean? Like, and, um, and it's another way for them to get their message out. In addition to, it's another way to, you know, just continue to have content, which is the other part is, is that, you know, the consistency of the content. Awesome. Well, if you have your PowerPoint presentation, you are welcome to share. I'm like, so this is the deal. I don't know how to um, go to the bottom yes. on YouTube and to see where it says share screen. Yes. It's that. <laughs> no worries. Yes, here it is. Uh, desktop. Allow them to share. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And my computer is uh, like, hold up. You sure? You <laughs> sure? <laughs> so I love some of the points that you were making, especially about the part if you never created, no one would never like it. That is so, you know, I'm going to create a graphic, but you're saying this, right? <laughs> And then the other one, what you said, when you open collaboration over competition. And I truly believe right now we're in the season with the, pan with the pandemic, with, with the protesting, that competition is really going away. Um, mm -hmm. Cause like collaboration is forcing itself to the forefront. But then again, you still have those people they you know they don't know how to do that mm -hmm. and that's why i've been really pushing education so much because we need to hear from experts like yourself and myself and the women this month who have did went through the trial and error to know how to do that mm -hmm. but i'm gonna be quiet because <laughs> honey i am so ready right now I was gonna say well i i'm really gonna just kind of breeze through because i talk about quite a lot in this um and we've talked about some of the stuff already so um as we this was the bundle that i created you know when we were going to uh do our event together i created some bundles that were specific for what i felt like your market um needed you know mm -hmm. so uh your link is has been posted inside of the chat, but it's joystick.com, R-E-F-T-W, Gamble. Um, and so that is, you know, that again, I'm going to send you some information. I wrote a book called Monetize Your Live Stream. So I'm going to send you that as well, too, so that you can, you know, um, make sure that you get it out to people. Um, awesome. I would um, love to share it. I already know the Startup Grind community already messaging me. Tell me, she gave away the thing free. Let me know. I said, y'all a mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to make sure. Um, I do have some things that, you know what I mean, that, that you can, um, that you can give away. Um, I will, you know, if you want, we can raffle off, you know, one of the tabletop versions of Joystick, of you know, um, to someone in your community. I'll let you, you know, pick who that is. And, um, and then, of course, we do have the coupon code, uh -huh. which is S S U G J A X, if I'm not mistaken, start up grind jacks. Um, right. mm -hmm. And then I think it's free startup grind. Yeah. So I'll make sure that we post all of that as well too. Um, you know, Father's Day is coming up, you know, yes. but you can always treat yourself, you know, um, as well. So yes. just a couple quick points on, you know, um, why you should live stream. Of course, it's easy to do. It's not, it's not easy for everybody. So I do, even though for me, it is easy. It's not easy for everybody. There are people that have their own issues. They don't like the way they sound. They don't like the way they look. They don't like the this, the that, the that, the that, you know. But, you know, at some point, you've got to get over that hurdle because your sheep will know your voice. Your sheep will know your name. And they're not worried about what you look like. They're not worried about what you sound like. They're worried. They want to hear your voice. And so, um, you know, when you've been called, you know, then you've been called and it's only but so long God's going to wait for you to, you know, to do what it is that he has asked and required of you to do. So um, you can increase your brand awareness. It has a very, very wide um, reach. You can engage with your following, though there are a lot of platforms that will allow you to, you know, 
stream to multiple platforms simultaneously. You know, I'm still, I still like to go live on multiple platforms at the same time using multiple devices because I like to engage with people differently. Again, there are people on Facebook that won't be on Instagram. And so I get a chance to, you know, speak to people. You know, my husband jokes around because in the middle of the video, I'd be like, hey. (laughs) (laughs) Because I've always felt like, you know, that is the reason, again, going back to being social, you know, that's what it's for, you know, um, you know, is people want to be seen, right? right? So what's the best way to see people is to say, hey, mommy, I see you. <laughs> hey, Giselle, thank you for tuning in. You know, like what better way to do that than to make sure that you shout them out. And sometimes on those other platforms, it makes it harder because you get lost and you can't, You can't necessarily speak to people, Um, but it allows others to be where you are at the present moment. Um, When I did a lot of photography, I would be on red carpets and not everybody could come, you know, like, and so people would be like, oh, Joy's on, you know, um, on this red carpet. And then you just see all these celebrities walk by, you know, or, or stop by and I would take photos. And that gave them the opportunity to feel like they were beside me, even though that they weren't, you know what I mean? Right. Um, uh, it allows you to build trust with your audience because people are seeing you. It's only but so much BS you can give somebody when they're looking at you, you know? Um, it's an immediate way to deliver high quality content. It's shareable again. And, you know, of course you can monetize it. Um, the video streaming market is estimated to grow from $30.29 billion in 2016 to over $70 billion in 2021. Um, 81% of the internet audiences viewed more live content in 2016 than they did in 2015. So all that's, with all that being said, all that's saying is, is that, one, there are people out here making money. Now, it might not be you. But it's somebody out here making money off of their video streaming. And if the, the audience in number has increased, then that means that there are more people doing it. So if there's money to be made and more people are watching, then why not get in, you know, um, where we fit in on that? Facebook Live videos are watched three times longer than a regular video. My 2016 video ad spending will reach $5.4 billion according to Break Media. So again, I mean, $5.4 billion, you know, in ads. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of times we don't want to necessarily um, put an ad, but if you are working with someone else, very uh, great example was uh, a friend of mine with um, Vivid Talk yesterday. She wants to start going live. She said every Tuesday, every Monday, she wants to go live at a certain time. I mean, every day she wants to go live at a certain time. And she partnered up with me. She reached out to me and she said, hey, Joy, you know, I know you've got this, you know, amazing joystick. Is there any way that we could work together? And I'm like, of course it is. You know, like, again, it goes back to being, you know, to collaborating versus trying to compete with her. There's no reason why she has a completely different demographic than I have. So it makes sense for me to jump in on her demographic and for her to jump in on mine you know um i love the word cross pollinate and so you know it's a great way for us to cross pollinate our brands um facts on why you should live stream youtube live was the largest largest streaming platform in early 2016 um but of course they lost some of that ground to facebook because obviously facebook is starting to allow people to live stream as well too Compelling content is the primary motivator for live online viewing. Millennials are more likely to consume live content on a smartphone um, at 56% or at a t- on a tablet at 44%. Up to 30% of viewers who have watched a live stream event will go to the event the next time they have it, which is another really, really interesting thing. Some people will love to sit at home <laughs> they might, they won't buy your ticket, but then if they see that your event was a success, they will be there the very next time they have it, you know? Um, and so 
it is great, even if you don't live stream the whole thing, to just live stream throughout your event so that people can see, you know, what you have going on. Um, live streaming provides an inexpensive way to share valuable information. It'll create a virtual community of loyal watchers and long-term business relationships. Another reason why you should um, collaborate with other people. And then of course, when it comes to loyal watchers, I talked to you about making sure that you are um, staying um, consistent because one thing you don't want is, you know, there were plenty of times that I would sit um, at home with my aunt and we will watch Young and the Restless <laughs> at 12 o'clock <laughs> with Victor Newman. Oh, now, Lord. how mad would we have been if we tuned in and Victor was not up there at 12 o'clock, you know, <laughs> on some random Monday or Tuesday? You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. So you have to think about building your brand the same exact way. You know, if you are going to commit to something, make sure that you can, you can commit. Um, because once people start following you and start loving what you're giving them, they are, it's like, they're going to be scratching to, to get more, you know? Um, of course, social media platforms, YouTube, Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, you know, um, live stream and you stream are, are um, services that you could use, but you can pay for it. Vimeo is another platform. Um, I talked about, I just kind of did like a comparison and contrast of, you know, some of the platforms that you can use. So of course, like I said, I'm gonna make sure that I get you um, the book so that you can see this. Um, again, we talked earlier, Instagram Live now, um, one of the things that they are uh, allowing you to do is you could go live, but afterwards it goes, you have the option to go to your Instagram TV page. Um, you can download it or you can delete it. So. You know, one of the cool things about going live with them is it automatically, it, they're forcing you to have co continuous content on your page. So one of the cool things about your IGTV is you can actually, you can create series. So like if I, on my joystick page, if I wanna talk about new products, I can have a series about joystick products. If I wanna talk about you know, speaking engagements, I can have a series for speaking engagements. So very similar to like what we're doing right now, I have a series and afterwards, once it's done, after an hour happens, nine times out of 10, I think they, they might've allowed it to go longer, but what will end up happening is I'll save it and I'll put it to my IGTV page under a particular series. So they're literally forcing you to create strategic content. You see what I'm saying? Right. Um, and, and it's pretty cool because for content creators, it's a lot easier for you to go live than you have to, like I said like earlier, save it, chop it up, edit it. Then you gotta go to the computer to upload it. You know what I mean? Like you can save it immediately and be done with it, you know? Right. Um, strategies to monetize, selling the completed broadcast to other publishers. You know, um, I told you about how we uh, sell on, you know, the replay. Uh -huh. um, live viewing is free, but the replay might cost you. When you add more value to the experience, you can charge more for it. Um, syndicating the live stream that you create to other broadcasters, actively interact with your viewers so they stick around longer. Very similar to you talked about how you were in school, you know, when you were giving away stuff, mm -hmm. you know, like if people know, hey, um, I'm going to pick a random person on my live stream to win something, you know, they might stick around to, you know, see if they're the one that wins, right? Right. Um, so you could do product uh, placement. Uh, you could do paid product review, you know, um, advertising throughout your stream, charging viewers for access to the live women webinar events or panels, very similar to what we did with CBO. Um, you know, we charged people who weren't able to make it to Savannah a ticket, you know, um, right. which at the end of the day, you know, allows you just the ability to get to so many more people. And that's one of the things that I love is that you can get beyond the four walls of the building that you're in. She, she had great attendance, wow. great attendance at that event. 
but yes, she would have never been able to reach Africa. No, she wouldn't have. Not you know, and so, without live streaming. You yeah, know. not without live streaming. And so that's one of the things that uh, it allows you to be able to do. Of course, sponsorship from other businesses. Um, and this now, is I want to, I want before you move on and ask your question, syndicating mm -hmm. the live stream. I've seen a couple of people do that, mm -hmm. but is that easy to do or is it difficult to do or is that in your book? So it depends on who you're working with. Okay. So they're the ones that you would really have to, you know, kind of figure out, you know, whether or not they have any, um, parameters, you know, that you have to get around to actually syndicate it. Um, and so that's one of the things that, you know, it's, it's easy, but it's not, you know, yeah. what I mean? like, because there might be words that you drop, like the fact that startup grind is behind you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that might be one of the things that they don't want you to do. You yeah, know, they might not want you to cross promote. And so when you're creating content, you have to reach out to them and say, hey, I'm looking to syndicate. What do I need to do ahead of time so that when I'm done with it, you you'll be interested in it? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drop our name about, about a million times. You know, <laughs> 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 so think about um, when you are watching a movie. And then you're like, there goes a Ford, there goes another one, there goes a, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's very similar, you know, it's very similar to that. Okay, got it. Um, and this is all kind of like, you know, um, some, some quotes and some facts. 80% of people would rather watch a live stream from a brand they follow than read their blog. You know, we've gotten lazy as um, individuals where you know, we would rather listen to an audio book versus actually turn the pages in a book. So, of course, when it comes to live streaming, you know, they would rather watch. Um, and then they pop in and out, you know. Um, I love this. Viewers spend way more time watching live streaming versus standard video content with the length of time varying by the device. On mobile devices, people spend an average of 2.8 minutes watching a standard video yet they'll spend five minutes on a live stream. On a tablet, standard videos get about four minutes of viewing time while on a live stream, you can actually get them to watch for more than seven minutes. Top viewership goes to desktop users with live streams earning an impressive 34.5 minutes of viewing time with standard videos only getting about 2.6 minutes. So even when you're creating content, you have to be very, very mindful that you only have your subjects for a short amount of time. You know what I mean? They yeah. might pop in and out, but that attention span, if you're not talking about something that they want to hear or talking about something that they paid to watch, they're going to be like, oh, all right, that's cool. I see what they're doing. All right, peace. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, and so you have to be very, very engaging. So even when you go back and you repurpose the content and you edit it, make sure that within the first few seconds of the video, it is something that, you know, gets people's attention immediately. 82% um, of people would rather watch a, I think I already said that, 78% of Facebook users are already watching live streaming on a platform. Um, on social media, videos receive um, 120,000 more shares than both text and video posts combined. So again, what that means, and, and you can, we, we all have seen, you know, how videos get um, reshared, reshared, reshared. Let it be, you know what I mean, somebody acting crazy, you know, <laughs> um, and that post will get reshared a million times. But if it's someone actually dropping some knowledge, you know, that's true. Maybe not so much. Um, the number one reason people watch live streams is because of the quality of the content. So don't just live stream just to be live streaming. Make sure that you're providing your viewers with value. Um, and then I go into talking about content creation and repurposing. Content is king. Of course, we have to always be creating it. Um, um, content development is 
research and producing and publishing information to meet a strategic goal. The goal will either be to build a connection with the audience or to encourage some kind of marketing or sales. Um, you know, this is how it, it kind of works. You generate an idea, you refine the idea, then you structure the content. Um, again, this is kind of like the content marketing life cycle, plan, produce, promote, analyze, amplify, um, different ways to repurpose your content. We talked a little bit about this. You can create a long, um, a blog post, an ebook. You can put, post uh, a presentation. You can make an email teaser, Facebook, Twitter, photos with captions in the visual form. You can repost for a video, maybe a slideshow, um, stories on you know your Snapchat, your Instagram, or your Facebook. I do kind of go into 10 ways to repurpose your content. Um, again, we talked about it, making audio podcasts. We use Anchor edit short form videos together into one longer video. Um, I love the app called InShot. You can get it on your phone and it is very, very easy to uh, manipulate and to work with. Um, I feel like nowadays they're giving us a lot of great and easy tools to use mm -hmm. um, to take away the excuses. You know, yes. one of the reasons why I created Joystick was I didn't want you know, creating content or getting the message out to be an excuse for people. You know, well, I couldn't do it because I couldn't, you know, create the video. Okay, well, now you've invested in your business. You've got a joystick, you've got a phone, now what? Awesome. And so that takes away that, that excuse. Now, whether or not they still have one, I ain't got nothing to do with, you know what I mean? Um, make a one minute trailer for Instagram. So Joy, for, uh, yes, I, I noticed your diagram is from the nonprofit marketing guide. Mm -hmm. Does these be, um, how much do you know the success of any nonprofits using um, yeah. this content to repurpose, possibly to help with fundraising? I believe that a lot of nonprofits, you know, I don't know the actual number stat, you know, mm -hmm. but I definitely know that if you're using any of these different ways to repurpose your content, then you are then you are going to be making a difference because most people don't necessarily do that. Most people aren't repurposing content. They're creating it and they're letting it go. Like I talked to you earlier about, you know, uh -huh. um, me and you were gonna have this great video and Startup Grind will have it for later and no one will ever hear about it again. You know, that's what most people are doing. And so what we have to do as um, the ones initiating and creating the content is making sure that we are giving people a reason to follow our brand. Right. Like why, why, why do I need to, you know, give my money to this nonprofit? What is so great about their nonprofit versus another nonprofit? You know, or what's so great about this person's brand versus another person's brand? You know, there are, you go down uh, the, well, I, I love the, the analogy, you go down the cereal aisle and they take up, the cereal takes up the most space in the grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. There are a million different cereals, but yet when you go, you know exactly which one you're going to go get, right? Right. You don't, you know, you're not sitting there worried about whether or not the knockoff, you know, cornflakes, whether or not you're going to buy them versus the regular cornflakes, you know what I mean? So when you're creating content, I can't be worried about whether or not someone else might make it better than me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, these nonprofits and business people and entrepreneurs, that, that can't be the thing that we worry about. I, I spoke it earlier, your sheep will know your voice. They know who they need to listen to, you know? But they also know that if you're not speaking, they'll never find you, you know? That's so good. you've got to be doing your due diligence on your end to make sure that people are able to see you and hear you and once the world opens up again they can touch you you know and hug on you and love on you and um and that just that that's deeper than just being you know um a brand 
that's you having compassion and understanding what's going on with the world right now, you know, um, and understanding that, you know, black lives do matter, you know, right. um, because obviously black lives have, you know, have been through way more than, you know, some of our other ethnicities, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so you have to be compassionate about everything going on. You can't just be in your own bubble and think that your sheep will find you, you know? That's true. Now I've saw um, Bernice King, she's been streaming from Twitter. I mm -hmm. know you can stream from Twitter. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> Look, that's so funny that you say that. Look, there goes Twitter, <laughs> there goes Twitter right there. Um, yes, you can. Um, and so this is the other thing, because Twitter seems as if it's so old, just like Periscope seems as if it's so old. It's not, you know, it has been there for the, the longest time and it's not gonna, and it's not gonna go away, you know? And so because it's not gonna go away and because we don't know who likes which platform, you've got to find a way to make sure that, you know, you're giving everyone what they need if that makes sense. It sure does. I yeah. like this, this handout you got, this diagram, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah, you know, it took me a minute to, uh, to figure this part out, but, um, uh, you know, it, one of the other things that I know that it, it takes is it's going to take some time when you are leading the pack or saying you are, you know, um, great at this and great at that. And you're speaking to people, you're going to, it's going to take some time to, to, um, to create your, um, your presentations and find stuff, you know, that goes along with what you, um, believe in. And, you know, I got this information from Blue Crow Studio. One thing I do believe in is shouting out, you know, where I got the content from and where I got the information from, you know, that's just for, um, because I don't want to seem like, I mean, I don't know everything, that's for sure. But I do know that at the end of the day, if you have, if I'm getting it from you, I'm going to give you your, your, your due diligence. Because as a photographer, there have been plenty of times where I have um, taken photos and no one has ever given me my credit, you know? So, um, so this again, you know, just kind of goes through and just shows different ways that you can repurpose content. You know, um, blogging has, has been, you know, been around for a long time. So obviously, you know, to have a blog is another way that you can, um, repurpose your content, of course, you know, your, your YouTube page, your YouTube page, um, you have Twitter, you've got Facebook, you've got Google um, as well To The main thing is, again, once you've created the content, that's when it's gonna take some time for you to figure out just how you're going to repurpose it. And it might be all of these different ways, you know, it might, you might find that, you know what, the best way is for me to create a couple videos and post it on my YouTube page, you know? Um, but you'll figure that out as you, you know, you go through customer engagement, customer feedback is vital to successful product development, brand development and marketing. You gotta make sure that, you know, you're always communicating and talking and getting um, customer feedback, you know? Um, one of, I had, I had a situation where, you know, a girl wanted a refund and I had no problem refunding it, but I said to her, I was like, well, what could I have done to make the situation, you know, better for you, you know? And the unfortunate thing is, is that I never got any feedback, but I would have loved it and I wanted it because out of, you know, over a thousand plus products, I've only had to refund one, two people. And the funny thing is, is that the first person she got it shipped to when I think something had broke. And, but our customer, she was so excited about my customer service that she was at an event that I just so happened to be at. And she was like, well, I can buy it now in person and I don't have to worry about anything breaking. You know what I mean? Because I'm gonna be taking it home. And she was just like, yeah, um, 
I'm the customer that such and such. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I remember. Cause we had sat on the phone for a long time trying to figure out, you know, what happened and everything or whatever. But she was like, you know, your customer service just was so great that, you know, the refund wasn't even really a refund, you know, because she ended up buying it again later, which was, you know, really, really great for me, you know, and for her because she needed it, you know? Um, That's awesome. But yeah, customer feedback, what could I do better? What could, what would you change? You know, all of that is important. You know, especially when it comes to videos, like, hey, how are my videos? What do you like? You know, what don't you like? Mm-hmm. You know, are they too long? You mm-hmm. know, um, and a lot of times you'll, you'll find that even though you're giving great content, again, the average person can't watch 45 minutes. You know, um, and so you've got to figure out a way to, you know, kind of like chop it up. This kind of goes into Instagram Live and IG stories. Um, You know, when I talk to you about how you could upload it, you know, from the web instead of, you know, 15 minutes if you were, you know, doing it from your phone, 60 minutes if you're uploading it, and then you would go here to IGTV and then click the upload button. And that's from your desktop. Um, And this is from your computer. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Um, A lot of times when you are uploading, this kind of goes over the the video resolution size because there is a difference Mm -hmm. when you are on Instagram. Most of us know that when you go live, it has to be uh, vertical. So when you are creating videos for IGTV or creating, um, you know, ads, Sometimes you'll see how the the photo or the words are cut off, right? You know, and um, from a photographer's point of view, I'm like, oh, yeah. it just drives me crazy. But not everybody knows that there are, you know, um, different ways for you to um, upload video and and photos, and that it has to be a particular size, even with the file format. You know, for IGTV, it has to be MP4. You know. Okay. Um, if you upload a vertical video, it has to be 916. Whereas if you upload a horizontal video, that it's 169. 169 is really for YouTube. For um, Instagram, it has to be 916. So, um, and that's like a technical, you know, the, the technical part. Uh, but you know, it does it does matter. It does make a difference. Um, when you're creating a video for IGTV, of course, record horizontally, focus on the long form, create content that's over three minutes long, um, create unique content and ask your audience. Again, you know, it's social media. So, you know, they definitely want you to be social, you know, um, sh- refer people offsite in all your videos, give them a reason to stick around, you know, um, and reshare your content. It actually says repurpose it for IGTV. Um, I actually had did a video and it was funny because one person was like, I'm not gonna, like they literally were like, I'm not gonna sign up for your YouTube page. They were like, can you just put it on IGTV? And I'm like, you're so lazy. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, okay, all right, whatever. And so, you know, again, there are people that won't go to YouTube. They'll never subscribe. They'll never do any of that. They are strictly Instagram, you know, or strictly Facebook or whatever, you know. Right. Um, why IGTV? It's easy to use, easy to share. Brand building. You don't need expensive equipment to do it. Um, video is an awesome way to get the message across. Um, be consistent, how to get started. The number one thing is be consistent, be consistent, strategic and authentic. You know, again, um, always include a call to action. Me and you, um, our call to action is to go to joystick.com backslash R-E-F backslash T-W gamble um, to receive uh, free shipping on your purchase. Keep it short and simple when you're first starting out, catch your audience in the first five seconds. That's the, probably the hardest thing to do, but it is it is um, necessary. And then, of course, this is how do I start a live video on Instagram? 
you know, um, so this is really just talks you like really through it. And Instagram is one hour only. Um, so you can go live on um, Facebook longer, but on Instagram TV, it's only one hour. Um, um, again, this is just how to do a video. And then the main thing is you just got to do it. You know, you'll sit there forever and you'll wonder, you know, you'll create a video and you'll do it over and over and over again. And then you might not ever use it because you'll end up talking yourself out of it, you know, um, create a couple talking points. And after you finish your talking points, you know, just go from there, you know, that's the main thing. Um, and, and one of the reasons why, you know, they talk about the five minutes, you know, I mean, the five seconds mm -hmm. um, is just making sure now, how do I go back to this? Awesome. Um, and hi, um, any of my attendees, Adriana, Maggie, do y'all have any questions from Joy? I told y'all she was going to drop it like a hot tonight. I don't wrote about <laughs> five pages of notes up over him. But um, I forgot about you wrote the book, um, Joy. Um, and um, make sure you send me the cover. Yes. And um, is it on your website where they can buy the book? Yes, um, they can buy the book on the website. Girl, how do I go back to this? Okay, go back to share. Go down to your share. <laughs> oh, I see. Stop share. There you go. Yes, see, that's teamwork makes the dream work. Always. Um, I have it. Um, it's actually on my website for purchase, and it is actually on Amazon as well, too. For all of those who are in the presentation, I will make sure that um, you get a copy of it so that you can give it to them. So I sure will. Maggie say you have been very thorough with an explanation <laughs> point. <laughs> uh, look, I hope you got it all. That's for sure. I just had somebody on uh, Instagram say, I love this info. So that's See? a good thing. She said, um, Adriana say thank you. It was great. So oh, I, she's still up here. At the yes. Uh -uh. Oh. Adriana and Megan, they look, they was hanging in there. Those two, they I think they like me. They content sponges. They love yeah. to get content to be innovative. Um, both of them both do lives just like I do. And um, like I was saying earlier, trying to repurpose content. Um, but I guess for me. I have always been told I give too much, but then I learned last Tuesday from Lakeisha, she was saying, don't worry about the amount of content that you give, but she said, make sure you have a, a offer at the end of all the content that you give. And that's when she went into the sales funnel and I'm like, I'm hitting my head. I'm like, duh. Yeah. That call to, that call to action um, is, is very, very important, you know? And sometimes when you are recreating your video and repurposing the content, you should put the call to action a couple times throughout the video, you okay. know, like reminding people, because again, you might not watch the whole 15 minutes, right. but if, if the call to action was in the first two minutes and they fell off at minute three, then at least they know, okay, go to joystick.com backslash RF backslash TW gamble and get free shipping on my joystick. Got it. Okay. You gotcha. know, and so I don't think it's, uh, you know, one of the reasons, one of the things that I asked you before um, we went live is I know that we were selling tickets. And so right. I wanted to make sure, hey, is it okay for me to go live on my social media platform? Because this is free. They didn't register, you know? And mm -hmm. so I wanted to ask because some people, they don't want, they don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I believe that at the end of the day, you know, people are going to support regardless, you know, right. um, maybe just like the video, um, the, the, um, the book said, maybe they might not have bought a ticket for tonight, but they're like, oh man, this is great. Women in Tech Tuesday, next Tuesday, she's going to be talking to somebody else. And so maybe they'll buy a ticket for next Tuesday. Right. Now, Adriana has a question. She said, which platform is tuning into the most customers for, for, for you right now? Which platform do you get the most customers that listening for you right um, now? You know, the interesting thing is that um, I typically still go live on both. I, st I typically 
go live on Facebook and Instagram. And so it's it's hard for me to say instant Facebook is is easier because people can share it, you right. know. Um, but uh it's it's been weird because sometimes it's Facebook and sometimes it's it's Instagram, which reminds me it's okay to still be on both. Now, what I've what I have noticed is that even though I have eleven thousand followers on my personal Instagram page, nine times out of ten, if I'm going live on Instagram for Joystick and Instagram for my You Bring Me Joy page, I get more views on my Joystick page. Wow, which is very very interesting because I don't have as many followers on that page, but. I believe that the followers that I do have on that page are looking for exactly what I'm talking about. So now, I'm, a, I'm now, talking about content and yeah. repurposing content and technology, they're zoomed in on that page. Sometimes when I go live on my You Bring Me Joy page, I'll be all over the place. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what joy do. It have you all right. over the place. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. But it, so it has been very, very interesting. But, you know, again, I just, I've always, I, when I did the multiple platforms simultaneously, they weren't doing, you know, StreamYard at the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they weren't doing all of these platforms where you could stream to 50 million platforms simultaneously. Right. And so when they did start doing it, I heard a lot of people say, well, you know, they're doing this now. Why should I be on, you know, multiple platforms? And again, I go back to what we talked about, you know, like there are people that just, I want to be able to speak to Angelis. You know, right. I, want to, I want her to know that I see her you know, and, um, and, and so for me, you know, it might be old school, but I still like it. Okay. Well, you know, Adriana, she's an economist. She's all about mm -hmm. data. She was in the <laughs> Teach Me Tools this last month. Right. And she was saying how important data is would drive our decisions, you know, mm -hmm. where we need to be, you know, spending the most time at or where there's a gap or a need that you can feel. So I was waiting for her question. I knew she was going <laughs> to, <laughs> I knew she was going to say right, so. I need to give, and, and so it's, the other part too is, is that, you know, a lot of people forget about YouTube, you know, um, but one of the things that I love about YouTube is that when you post a video, you can post it like it's happening right then. You know, you can do it like it's a, a premiere. Um, so even though it's not, you know what I mean? It right. is to everyone else. And I, and, and the same with Facebook, I love like how you can do the watch party, you right. know? Um, That's true. and so it's very, very engaging, even though it's not happening at that moment, you can still, you know, show it over and over and over again. Right. You know, um, which is, which I think is, is pretty awesome. This has been amazing. I learned more and more and more about live stream because <laughs> I'm having to rebrand and, you know, do my services as well. And I already started repurposing content. And I think I am the only startup grind director that has a podcast specifically for my chapter. Oh, so what wow. I do, yeah, what I do, I take the videos, I put it on the Startup Grind YouTube channel, which they have 18,600 followers the last time oh, I wow. checked. So uh, thank you, Adriana. Um, this is where um, this video will go, um, but I have to download it and customize it and brand it with Startup mm -hmm. Grind. But then right now I'm streaming to my person, my YouTube channel for business. I see. So what I don't get on the Zoom, I can pick up from the YouTube channel from my um, channel and gotcha. then I leave both of them there. So even though it's for startup grind, I leave them. It's still on. It stays on my channel gotcha. um, with Concierge Resource Professional, and then I launched the podcast for Startup Grind Jacks, which on Podbean, where I take the audio from this um, video and I upload it to the Startup Grind Jacksonville podcast mm. because different people are absorbing content different ways. So mm -hmm. now I'm getting ready to take another step. I got to see if I'm. If I'm stretched enough to do it 
I want to take the transcription of our videos and create blogs mm. for the Start Up Grind Jacksonville chapter that I can send out through the automation emails that we send out to all okay. our members. Like a, the, like a newsletter. Right. Yes. Because the chapter has grown from 225 to almost 600. Oh, wow. A little less than a year since I've been director. Wow. So, so I adopted 225, but I've grown it to almost 600 members. Wow, that's awesome. So I just enjoy everything that you do. I I, I love the, the tools that you're giving. And uh, <laughs> so as soon, yeah, as soon as um we get done tonight, normally, Joy, I turn around videos. I try to get them turned around probably less than 72 hours. So oh, they wow. up. So that's me. actually like that turnaround time is pretty amazing too because a lot of times you know it it takes so much longer because it's video right. you know um to chop it up and edit and and add your voila to it <laughs> yes i love it <laughs> so before we go i'm a, i always give my speakers the last word the hope you know at least a, a, a thought of hope a call to action before we end our meetings um, from what they need to be doing now, but you had some amazing quotes today. Boy, she told the folks to stop being lazy. I was not trying to run out to run out my chat, Jesus, because I've been preaching that. So I'm gonna give you the last word. Tell them okay. how they can find you, how they connect with you, okay. and um, and then where to get your book. And um, you already dropped the affiliate link in the chat, and we also have the flyer up as well on social media okay. for her promo specials and this will be a cool father's day gift so i'm miss yes. stokes i'm gonna give you the last words before we close out for the evening all right um hold on i'm typing so i just want to say again thank you um you can follow me on um instagram as joystick j-o-i underscore s-t-i-k um, and on Facebook, we are Joystick LLC. Um, and of course, the website is joystick.com. Um, the promo code is SUG, SUG for Startup Grind, JAX, J A X F R E E for free shipping. Um, if you're in the Atlanta area, it'll still take, if I'm not mistaken, like $18 off your purchase if you use it. Um, the one thing I just want to leave with is just make sure that you are doing your due diligence in your business with everything that's going on. I really, really pray, especially right now, that when we come out of this COVID-19, things are going to be different. We, we have to adopt a new normal, and we still don't necessarily know what that looks like, but one thing we do know for sure is that this time that God has given us, which most people have prayed for, I need time, I don't have time, I need this, I need that. We've prayed for time, God has given us time to be home, to um, work on ourselves, to figure out what our purpose is, to work on you know, building our businesses and our brand. I really pray that we're using that time wisely. That's the main thing, you know, um, we have to we have to be very strategic and we have to make sure that we get outside of our comfort level one of the things that is um one of the quotes that's in 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 not the quote but my mentor alice rodriguez always told me that we have to elevate our pain threshold because success is not going to be easy success is not going to um not going to come to you Millionaires aren't knocking on the door. You know, you have to go out and get it. And even though right now we're not able to physically go out, we, there's still a way when, while we're creating content, collaborating with people, you know, you're all the way in Jacksonville, I'm here in Atlanta. You know, we're still, you still have to find a way to get the message out. And, um, and, and I think that that's the main, that I think that that's the main thing for me is God gave you a voice and he wants you to use it, you know, and, um, and you, and, and that's our payback to him is using it, you know what I mean? Like, yes, so, right. um, so I really, really do pray that people are, are taking the time to, to use their voice and taking their time to use their gift 
in the best way possible. You know, um, not everybody is going to be able to, to um, go out and protest. You know, not everybody feels comfortable going out and protesting. Not everybody feels comfortable, you know, doing X, Y, and Z. Do what you feel, pray about it, do what you feel is comfortable for you and your sphere of influence, but just be doing something, you know, um, in your calling and in your purpose. And, you know, the, you'll attract the right people and those right people will put you in rooms that you never expected to be. Who, who would have known? Right. Who would have known? <laughs> you are so true. I love who those known words. That, you know, two years later or no, a year. Yeah. A year. A year. Uh, it'll be, it'll be a year because we talked about, um, of course, we talked about doing CBO Summit again this year. Right. You know, who would have known that I might not be able to make it because I'm going to pop out a baby in August. <laughs> <laughs> This is true. I thank you so much, Joy, for your time this this evening. You and um your bundle of joy um, <laughs> that you're getting ready to have. I thank my participants, the ladies that joined us this evening. I thank for Start of Grind Jackson, um, Jacksonville chapter, the Start of Grind headquarters community. And I just want to encourage each of you, take the words of advice. Thank you so much, Maggie, for participating. Take the words and advice from, from Joy. You know, stop being lazy. It's not competition. It's collaboration. I mean, she really dropped some nuggets tonight. And I just want to make sure that everyone knows this is not a competition against each other. We got to work together to come up with the new blueprint for how our new normal will be after the pandemic. And just like Joy said, if you're not the one to physically put boots on the ground and protest, Dr. Bernice King is doing a virtual protest on Twitter. So you can connect with her if you want to protest on virtually. Then you also can write your congressman or congresswoman about some of these legislative issues that need to be changed. So and learning this tonight, we can do emailing, we can send a video, we can send them all kind of stuff. Yes. Learning from Joy. So <laughs> I just want to tell her so much. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I enjoy everything. I look forward to getting your content, your promotional opportunities where I can share with the Startup Grind community, with the Jacksonville community, and some of my Southeast and Coastal Georgia partners that I collaborate <laughs> with because I don't hoard information. I share it. So as soon as she gets it to me, I will get it to you all. So thank, thank you. you so much, Joy, for being thank virtually you. in the room. All the attendees, you all be safe. Stay connected. Stay at home. Make, if you do go out, make sure you socially distance. And you make sure that you be a change agent right now. That's what we need. So this is your host, Teresa Gamble, the chapter director of Startup Grind Jacksonville, Florida. We just heard an amazing speaker tonight with Joy Stokes of Joy Stoke, Joystick um, <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia, coming to us live, letting us know how we can monetize our live stream, gave us tons of resources, tons, tons, tons. And I just want to tell her so much, and we will have her back again and again and again. But I'm going to give her time to recoup after the baby, though. <laughs> well, All right. That's, that's right. Amen. Awesome. I love you, Joy, and appreciate love you, too. you, Thank so, you so much. much. Thank you all to my attendees. Y'all have a good evening.